the module is based primarily on the ideas of uh, Bill Hillier and Julian Hansen from as far back as uh, the late 70s. Uh, and, and they ran this small unit called the Space and Tax Lab at the Bartlett School of Architecture at UCL, uh, where they were keen about urbanization processes. How did cities come into being? And it was primarily a reaction to all of uh, modernist planning that, that we see all around us, uh, which pretty much in our part of the world came with Corbusier and those kind of influences. Um, and, and as uh, Tim Stoner would, would say, um, before that we've always had this organic city or, or this sort of city culture which has grown with time. And somehow in the early, 90, 90, uh, early 1900s we forgot about you know, how cities came into being and we decided to, to plan cities according to geometrical grids. That's what my interest was, to, to, to inquire into why that happened and, and whether that really was a good solution or not because across the world we see that to, to have failed and, and to be failing constantly. Particularly in developing countries like ours, you see there's, there's an even higher rate of, of urban migration which is taking place right now. And, and of course, if, if it's not tackled in the right way, it would become a dangerous problem. And uh, so, so that pretty much sums up where I'm coming from. Now, it's not enough to, of course, understand these processes unless we can do something about it. Um, the understanding of these processes, of course, is largely dependent on evidence-based methods. We inquire into urbanization processes, we inquire into the space of cities, we inquire into what the social meaning is behind all of this. And um, it's only then can we can we form a empirical database to, to really understand how, how this goes forward. Broadly to answer your question, at least from, from an outside point of view, would be the key difference between a normative, normative theory and, and an analytical theory. And, and some of this I spoke about in, in the class. Um, it's about how have we approached architecture, urban design, say in the last 50, 60, 70 years. Uh, and I would claim, and not just me, I mean, Hilia or any of these other people would also claim that it's been largely based on normative theories. You know, look at all the things that, that we look around as concepts, look at any architecture school around uh, India or, or the world, and then there's this major focus on concept. What is the concept behind your design? Some, and there's some beautiful ideas and thoughts, nothing wrong with them. But do these concepts actually work? How do they relate, relate to social behavior? You know, th those are the kind of questions we're trying to understand in very uh, quantitative quantitative analytical ways and hopefully through through this module we would be able to ask some of those questions does space matter if it does how does it matter what does this mean for our cities where are we going from here and all of this is based on on one simple thing where are we coming from and as someone I look up to it, when it comes to educational thought it says very clearly that unless we know where we're coming from how will we appreciate where we're going of course I don't see myself very much different to a student you know, myself, my interest is in asking the questions uh, to myself or to others and, and hopefully all of us will together find answers or at least look for the right answers. I can tell you what is different about it from, from my time as being a student and, and I think a comparison to Basil Bernstein, a major educational theorist, uh, is fair at this point where, where he talks about this difference between integrative codes and collective codes of education. and. Increasingly, you see around the world, we're moving towards a collective code format, format of education. In India, uh, at least largely, we still follow that integrative code where you're expected to study a certain set of subjects and there's a certain order of those studies that you're expected to have. So one thing that, that's certainly different is that it's a multidisciplinary class and often you tend to find, whether it's an architecture school or it's a design school, there's people with very similar backgrounds or at least very similar interests who, who come into the program. Here, the fact that there's a wide range of people at, at a postgraduate level means that what they take away from this particular program will be very different from person to person, and, and they'll shape it according to what they want to, according to where they want to go with it. So, so certainly, I think that's the diversity. Certainly, is one of the things uh, in terms of uh, enthusiasm and engagement. I think that's the other thing which I see that everyone's aggressive. Everyone's you know looking for things. You, you can't take a step back. You, you have to be on your top game at every step also and that's exciting uh, for anybody.